Welcome to Tiny Village Bon Echo. We are spending the weekend here camping in our RV, but this campground offers so much more. If you want seasonal sites, they have them. And if you want to camp in a dome or a cabin, they have that too. So let's go check out what else this campground has to offer. Tiny Village Bon Echo is located approximately three and a half hours from Toronto and two hours from Ottawa. There are actually four tiny village locations, so you can also experience their unique accommodations, RV and tent camping sites in Perry Sound, Woodland Park and Ottawa River. Each park has something different to offer. We spent two nights at Tiny Village Bon Echo in our RV on one of their service sites and enjoyed the amenities of this well-maintained park. And I especially liked their river views and swimming in their pool. When we arrived, we were greeted at the main office by the park manager who gave us an overview of the park and also a map with the park rules on it. It was a quick drive to our site where we were able to easily back in and get all set up. I have to say, this rivals some of the Ontario park sites that we've had in the past when it comes to privacy. We are staying on site 44 and not only does it have electricity, but it also has a water hookup, which is pretty primo for us because normally we have to fill up at Ontario Parks before we head to our site. So let's take a look at site 44. The site isn't massive, but it fits our small trailer perfectly fine and even a little larger trailer could fit as well. The site comes with a picnic table and a fire pit and there's also a spot that's covered to store your firewood. Like I said earlier, the spot also has water and electricity. We are officially on a tour of the campground now. So this park offers sites that you can rent seasonally, which means you can park here for the entire camping season, or you can come up on a weekend like us. And they also have some cabin rentals that you can get or a dome. The road that we're on right now should take us down to the falls. So we're gonna go down there and check them out. And I think we can also get to a beach that's located on Crown Land. And if you are coming down to check out the falls, I would suggest wearing appropriate footwear, not the hiking sandals that I'm wearing right now, because it looks like this road has been a little bit washed out from all of the rain that they've had here recently. And when I was checking in, Michael, who is the manager of this place, told me that the water is exceptionally high right now because there has been so much rain recently. So that may be contributing to the falls being very loud and rapid. We made it down to the falls and they are moving. They also have some chairs down here and a garbage bin. And you can see behind me and probably hear that these falls are quite aggressive. The water is moving very quickly, but on this side behind the falls, it looks like it's slow, but you can kind of see a current that's moving very quickly. So I'm not sure that I'd want to swim in this area. We're going to go now try and check out the beach and see if it's a better area to get in our kayaks and to go swimming. If you go for a walk and forget the map like we did, the signal's good here and we can actually pull up a map on our phones and just navigate the park. So this trail is quite covered. So if you're trying to stay out of the sun, there is plenty of shade here, but with shade also comes mosquitoes and maybe black flies. I'm not sure what's biting us right now. So make sure that you have your bug spray, bring a bottle of water, wear appropriate footwear, don't do what we did. We weren't actually planning on doing this trail, but decided since we were already down here, we might as well. So if you are planning ahead, which I suggest you do, bring all of those things that I mentioned and then you'll have a lovely time. We have reached a part of this trail that is quite underwater and muddy. I am trying to navigate how to get over without getting a mud filled sandal. So let's give it a try. <laughs> that was bad. It 
didn't work. I tried so hard. <laughs> oh man. When he said they had a lot of rain, I didn't realize it would mean the dock is almost completely underwater. But we're gonna still try and get out to this one over here so that we can check out the views. Even the fire pit is completely underwater. Yeah, this is as far as you're gonna get. That's all mud and underwater. That's all underwater. Half the docks underwater. And to get down to this beach area, you do have to do quite a few stairs. They're a little bit steep, so I'll give you a look. The waterfront glass cabin is located next to the stairs to the river, so it's a great spot if you want to spend time at the water. We're hot, we're sweaty, and we're going swimming. The park offers a small playground, horseshoes, and a barbecue area by the pool. The washrooms here are actually quite clean. In the women's, there were two showers and two stalls with flush toilets. Overall, a thumbs up for me. One thing I would have liked to see were locking doors on the shower stalls, but that's just my personal preference. The pool is unsupervised, fenced in, and is only about four to five feet deep in the deepest part. It's cold. I thought the pool temperature was perfect and I got in right away. It took Alan a bit more convincing. The swimming pool here is definitely a 10 out of 10, especially after that really hot and sweaty and humid hike we just did. So very refreshing, I'm feeling very cooled down and now it's time to go make something for dinner. One of the great things about our site is that it's actually pretty close to the pool and the washroom. So if you need to go have a hot shower, just run and jump into the pool. It's not too far of a walk. So now that we're back at our site and all bug sprayed, we're just going to hang tight for a little while, make something to eat, have beers and a fire, and then we're going to call it a night. Cheers. Good morning from day two at Tiny Village. Alan got up early so that he could go film his video somewhere in the park. And I just got up, made myself a coffee, and I'm gonna have a nice leisurely morning. Compliments to the chef. This is really good. He's been giving himself a lot of compliments lately. <laughs> but I mean, his food's been good. And we're off to explore the park and see about where we could launch our kayaks. It's not looking too good for us, but we're gonna give it our best shot. We're on our way to the docks now, and it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to bring our kayaks down here either because they have no parking at the top to leave our truck so that we can unload and their stairs going down are really steep and kind of makeshift. The path is also kind of steep. I think we're just probably gonna give up on kayaking this weekend. Although you can rent kayaks, which are already down there. So if we really wanna go, we could always just do that. All right, we made it back to the dock area and it looks like there is a giant log over here on this one. So luckily we are wearing appropriate footwear and we're able to get to the other dock, which basically meant we had to go up to at least mid-calf 
in the water to walk over it because it is so high right now that the little beach area is completely underwater. Both of the docks have some chairs. This one has Muskoka chairs and the one over here has some reclining chairs or lounge chairs. So you could really have a nice day down here at the water. They have a very secluded tree house at the end of one of their camping roads. So if you're looking for some unique stays and a little bit more privacy, you can get that here. For tent camping, they have a number of unserviced sites that are located further away from the trailers and the main areas. Some of the sites here seem a little bit less private and more open compared to the others, but they are all located further away from the main area and it even has a porta potty and a little sink so that you can wash your hands, so that's pretty convenient. So we basically swam all afternoon until we turned pruney. Now we are back at our sites, nice and dry. We're going to be making some dinner and then just keeping it pretty low key. Tonight we're making chicken quesadillas. Compliments to the chef. <laughs> yep. Good morning from our final morning here at Tiny Village Bon Echo. If you've been watching my videos, you know that at the end of a stay, I always let you know what I liked and didn't like about that park, and I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna start with my dislikes, and there's really only one that I can think of, and that's getting down to the dock area. If you have any sort of mobility issue, a knee problem, a hip problem, just general issues walking, it may be difficult or impossible for you to get down to the dock area because the stairs are rather steep and there's quite a few of them and it's a very steep path. Additionally, if you have any sort of stroller or wagon or anything like that, you're really not gonna be able to get down here easily. You're gonna need to have to carry it somehow, and it's just not a very accessible dock area. So if you are planning to spend a lot of time by the water, just know that because I wouldn't want you to get here and be disappointed with your stay. They do, however, have a pool. So I'm gonna to switch to my lakes now because the pool is at the top of the list. I actually prefer swimming in pools anyways, and I thought they had a fantastic pool area here. So if you do like pools, you can check that out. It is a flat area, so it's easy to get to. I also really enjoyed their shower and washroom station here. It's centrally located and it was kept very clean. And it was fairly easy to walk around the entire park, but we did notice that the regulars here had golf carts and that would have been a little bit more convenient. I also like that our site had water and electricity, so that was super convenient, and that the sites here are really spaced out and there's a lot of tree coverage in between. And the last thing I really liked about this park is that in addition to RV camping, tent camping, they also have unique stays that you can choose from and book ahead. So that would be a fun way to come experience this park as well. Overall, we had a fantastic time here and I would love to come back in the future and maybe check out one of their unique stays like the tree house or the dome because they all looked really cool. Once we packed up, we made our way over to the dumping station, which was located by the pool area. Not in the greatest location in my opinion, as they did have the roundabout blocked off, so we did have to reverse into it. And this could be a very high traffic area with vehicles and golf carts depending on when you leave, but we managed okay. And then we were headed home by 10 a.m. Well, I hope this video can be helpful for you if you're planning a trip to Tiny Village Bon Echo in the future. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I have mixed feelings about this, but this is our last camping trip in our Clipper. Coming up, we spend our final camping trip in our Clipper at Port Burwell. We give you a tour of the park and check out some nearby attractions, so stay tuned for that.